If there's one team that's going to be having me glued to my TV all next season, it's going to be the Denver Nuggets. A team that was so close to breaking to the levels of contention, but was attacked by injuries is something painful to watch sometimes. But in the past two seasons, Nikola Jokic has probably pulled off the most insane carry job I've seen in a while, having some historical offensive seasons, improving defensively as a player, and becoming the league MVP twice. But even while doing that, missing out on Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., the two best offensive options outside of Nikola Jokic on this team, has pushed some guys into some roles that they don't need to be in, like um, Aaron Gordon being a main offensive scorer, Armonte Morris playing a lot of starters minutes, and it's also pushed the Denver Nuggets all the way down to the lower echelons of the playoff teams in the West. But after two years of misery, Jamal Murray is looked to come back next season completely healthy. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. seems to be coming back healthy, but you never know with the consistent back injuries with him. But right now, if things go right, not only are the Nuggets one of the most fascinating teams in the NBA, they're one of the most dangerous teams and could definitely look be looked at as a championship contender, even if Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray only come back at like 75% for the full season, because you can't really expect them to be back in their groove immediately. And with the explosion that Nicole Jokic's game has taken up the past two years without them, you can say with the less of a weight on his shoulders, Nikola Jokic is about to have probably one of his most efficient seasons in a while and probably one of his best seasons as a passer. So let's talk about why I think the Denver Nuggets are one of, if not the most fascinating team going into the next season. Before I get started, hi, I'm Afa B. I've been making content for a little while and people seem to be really liking the videos. They've been picking up some traction so far. So if you like basketball content, if you like Denver Nuggets content, because they're probably one of the main teams I do follow, the next season and this off season. Um, if you just like basketball in general, you need to fix um, overall this option, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I'd love to have you back here. After having a season where the Nuggets were setting themselves up as championship contenders, winning 17 of their last 20 before the injury, Jamal Murray went down with the ACL tear, completely killing a lot of the championship aspirations for the Denver Nuggets as one of the best young teams in the NBA. And it's very sad considering that he was having one of the best season, the best season of his young career um, in just his fifth year of the NBA, averaging 21 points per game, 4.8 assists, 4 rebounds, 1.3 steals on 47% shooting and 40% from three. But he wasn't the only player that was actually booming and showing exactly what he can do. The next player on this team that's very young, came at a steal for the Nuggets, is Michael Porter Jr., who this season also was averaging 19 points per game on 54% shooting and 45% from three, and he played 61 games in the entire year. So yeah, this team was definitely like that. It's absolutely insane just the levels that they were able to play to this year and just how sad it is that they got stripped of a chance to completely compete. And this is Nicole Jokic's first MVP season, averaging 26 points per game, 10.8 rebounds, 8.3 assists, 1.3 steals, on 56% shooting and 38% from three. Having the optimal spacing around him, um, being able to just play his role and play it really well. Now, with all the injuries, the Denver Nuggets this year, Let's just say they shouldn't have been anywhere close to where they were if it wasn't for Nicole Jokic. The carry job this man pulled off this year is absolutely in insane. So right now with the improvements that Nicole Jokic has already made to his game, and then you adding back a 21 point per game score and a 19 point per game score if he's able to stay healthy, is absolutely nuts. This team's only problem right now is that they just don't have the offensive tools next to Nicole Jokic to keep up a consistent level of scoring without him on the floor, without the teams completely focused on him and him alone. So right now, bringing back what is a fringe all-star in Jamal Murray and what is one of the best young players in Michael Porter Jr. to this team is what I think is enough to push them into their championship aspirations. But even with all that being said, I think we need to like bring our expectation down a little bit because with Jamal Murray coming off an ACL tear and Michael Porter Jr. coming off back injuries that's been going around for him since high school, it's very, very hard for me to think that this they could pull off the best possible situation that they can with this team. The best possible situation is that they come back at least 75 to 100 percent what they are, what they were before the injury in the season and the Denver Nuggets do what they're supposed to do, win 55 to almost 60 games and make a run for the NBA championship. But that's the best case scenario. The scenario that I think probably will happen is that they're gonna come back a little bit rusty and you're not gonna get the 21 point per game, um, Jamal Murray. You may get a 17 point per game 
and let him, you know, work back in because he missed a full season, or at least a little bit over a full season. Uh, Michael Porter Jr., depending on how the injuries are for him, he's going to have to work his way back. Probably the same 15 point per game score. But that still should be enough for the Denver Nuggets to at least be a top five seed in the Western Conference. And if they're able to stay healthy, I think going into the NBA playoffs, that's exactly what this Nuggets team is going to need is for this guy, for these guys not to be rushed back. You understand Nikola Jokic sometimes going to be enough for you to win some games. So slowly just work these guys back into the lineup. So when playoff time comes back around, they're just as good as they can be and ready to do some damage. But even while these two are great and they're probably one of the main reasons why I would have the Nuggets as contenders once they do come back, there's also the other guys on this team that have been in a role that they really shouldn't be in. Um, guys like Monte Morris and um, Aaron Gordon were put into advanced offensive roles that they really don't fit well in. Uh, Monte Morris is good for a good 20 to 25 minute spurt, just give you the energy, a guy that can really create in the pick and roll and create his own jump shot from time to time. He's not supposed to have the ball in his hands as much as he did this season. Aaron Gordon, at the same time, shouldn't be taking as many shots as he did. Um, he's definitely not a primary scorer in certain ways. Uh, but he's definitely a great complimentary piece and a great perimeter defender to have next to Jamal Murray, Nikola Jokic, or Michael Porter Jr., who aren't really known for their defense, even though I think Jokic's defense is very much underrated. You have a guy like Will Barton, again, another guy that was pushing a primary offensive role that shouldn't be in it, and to be honest, was flourishing with Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. on the court since he was just another offensive option that they can go to at any time that can hit spot up shots um make get his own basket at times and finish at the rim and is pretty athletic overall this team with these two coming back puts the other guys in the perfect role that they need to be and probably push guys that were in the starting lineup to the bench and give yourself even more scoring come off the bench and then you have some of the young bucks on this team like a bones highland who um on a team like the denver nuggets who i think have some of the best young player development in the entire league i mean look at nikola Jokic, and while you can't attribute um, his ascension to just the Denver Nuggets uh, player development team coming in this league as a second round pick them seeing the talent in him and help him not only get in shape but um, push him to work on his game or being there to help him work on his game as he pushed himself um, is definitely something you can look up to uh, you have a guy like Jamal Murray who um, came in the league uh, I think a little bit underrated I think he definitely should have went higher up in that draft looking at guys like Chris Dunn that got, got drafted over him but coming in this league um, being an uh, immediate offensive impact and only improving his game since the man was dropping 50 point games in the playoffs before he got injured. Like, it's absolutely insane. Um, you have a guy like Michael Porter Jr., who came in the league that had a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. I mean, after being a, almost a consensus number one player in the country, uh, but a lot of back injuries, not being able to play in college a lot, dropping his drafts out, dropping extremely, the Nuggets being able to swipe him up. Um, him not being the offensive, being in the offensive role that he wanted to, like in the bubble when he made comments about, you know, feel like he needs to get the ball more. He's slowly grown, not only mentally, but physically, and his game has also exploded. So the Denver Nuggets have shown the ability to not only control the, um, the personalities, but be able to have guys that buy into their role and other develop guys to be even better than they were before. So with all those things put together, having the MVP, Nikola Jokic, having the perfect common many pieces in uh, Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., having the great other guys and role players like an Aaron Gordon, like a Will Barton, like a Monte Morris on this team is going to be perfect. And I can't wait to see what this team can do next season. Because as of right now, I even think Nikola Jokic is probably going to get better or at least look better. He's going to look at least more efficient. Because even though he got more efficient from two this year, which is absolutely insane, going from 60% from two to 65%, but um, his three-point percentage really took a hit after these guys went down, and that's because of like the less than optimal spacing on this Denver Nuggets team. He was taking a lot more contested threes, but I think with these guys coming back, with the added spacing, um, with him not have to have the ball in his hands all the damn time, and him being able to play off ball sometimes and having somebody that can work in the pick and roll like a Jamal Murray, you're going to see a lot of these numbers shoot up through the roof. And I think the NBA is going to get a little too tired of giving the MVP award, even though he probably is going to have the numbers and the wins next season to deserve it again. But he's definitely going to be in that MVP conversation again. And we're going to have to have a real conversation of who's really the best player in the NBA, because right now I have Giannis up there. But guys like Nicole Jokic with the right common many pieces around him like Giannis does with Chris Milton and Drew Holiday, can put his name up there as some of the best players in the NBA. 
but let me know guys think in the comments down below um if you're still here even at the end of the video after my rambling here's a video where i talk about how nikola Jokic is being disrespected by the nba media it's the most viewed video on the channel so i think you'll enjoy it if you're a nuggets fan and the next video is probably going to be me talking about the dallas mavericks and why i also think they're another team that you can look out for to be championship contenders depending on what they do in the free agency with that being said this fb that's my time and i'm out